Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Powerplex in St. John's, Newfoundland, Labrador for Bell Align TV One's continuing coverage of the 2016 Hall of Fame Cup, the Elite Eight consolation round action. Now we have the Laval Cavaliers out of Placentia taking on the Mount Pearl Huskies from the Twin Cities in St. John's of Mount Pearl. Mount Pearl girls, Scott, uh, having a tough go of it as of, as of now. And I tell you what, great to see them all out there in the warm-up. Smiles on their faces, seem to enjoy being here, and that's good to see. By the way, folks, I'm Steve Power, joined again by the Swami, the guru, Scott Noftalov, and he'll be trained. Scott, what are your comments on, the, on what we should expect to see here today? Well, like, to your point, Steve, about the Mount Pearl team, a tough draw, eighth seed coming into the tournament. You have to play the number one team right off the bat. Then you have, unless you win, then the next test is against the number one team. Uh, sorry, the number two seed. Uh, tough for any basketball team, especially a young, inexperienced. A lot of great nines, a lot of great tens on this Mount Pearl senior high team. Looking for teams to come out with energy. We got some great 12s out here. This is, you know, the, into your last month of your high school basketball career. Uh, so we're, we're going to I think the team that, that, that uh, puts the pass behind them and brings the energy right now is, is going to be successful in this game. So we see Laval driving to the hoop earlier on. None other than number five, Haley Fudge, certainly one of the better players to watch in this Laval team. And the Mount Pro Senior High team, Scott, as far as we know, are, are they a younger squad? It certainly looks this way from where I'm sat. Uh, I'm not sure the exact numbers, but I know they do have grade nines on their team uh, and, and a number of grade tens. And like you say, that's tough too in an event like this. And it's certainly not a, a knock on the event. It is the Elite Eight after all. You do have to go. If you're a lower seed, you play the higher seeds. That's just the way it goes. But in a situation like that, it's like, here's your lunch. Now we're going to feed it to you too. Not once, but twice. Well, there's, there's, two, two, there's two options for your program. You can get bitter about it or you can get better. And, and we'll look to see this Mount Pearl team step up today and, 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 and try to improve and carry over into the next, next season. Laval comes away with the ball. It's Bailey Lannon up for Emily O'Keefe. Keith down low, out for Fudge now, out to Lannon. Lannon's going to take a shot from out far. Rebound comes down into the hands of Brooklyn McCarthy. McCarthy can't quite do that. That one, great save there by number 12, Catherine Smith of the Huskies. So I saw Catherine and the Mount Pearl Huskies play last uh, couple weeks ago at the Gonzaga tournament. I'm very impressed with this number 12, Catherine S Smith. Uh, tall, athletic, and you just see then uh, lots of hustle. Uh, diving for the loose ball. So Key finds Lannon. Lannon brings the ball to the hoop. Can't get that one to drop. And on the rebound, it is finally put down by Shada Griffiths for Laval. Mount Pearl on the attack. Ball handled by number seven, Hannah McCarthy. McCarthy puts the ball down low. Good rebound there by Catherine Smith. Smith gets fouled, goes hard to the basket, makes a nice play, and is going to take a trip to the foul line for her efforts. Sub coming into the game now, Lauren Bill checks in for the Huskies. Going to take the place of number 23, Chloe White. Smith from the charity stripe misses her first shot. And Scott, these teams, it wasn't that long ago that these teams played. Like you say, they played last night, played again this morning, and we know the conditioning is a big part of the game, but right now it's really a big part. This is a tough sled for these young athletes. Absolutely, huge turnaround. This is three games in less than 24 hours for these young ladies. And it all, it all comes down to your preparation. You know, as an, as an athlete, you have to be very disciplined in the time leading up to your tournament. You have to make sure that you're eating the right foods, drinking the right amounts of water, 
and prepared for this long haul Elite Eight. Again, you want to be a Hall of Famer. Th that's what it takes. We had a big collision. There's number four, Michaela Kylie, in some discomfort there on the sideline. For Mount Pearl, she took a nasty spill down below the basket. Let's hope she's going to be okay. In some discomfort there, needing some help to get to her feet. Big hand here from the folks in the gym from Michaela. That's good to see. All knotted up here early. And another thing, too, and I guess maybe more for Laval than Mount Pearl. Laval were in the last game they played. They, they played very, very well, I thought, Scott. We had the pleasure of calling that game. Now to play in a consolation game. We talked to one of the boys' coaches before earlier. The letdown from the teams who thought they had a chance at winning. Tough to get up for this game again, but... You know, that's what good teams and good players and good character people do. Absolutely. They do get up. You do compete. Absolutely. A, a great test for yourself as, as an athlete and for your, your team and your program, your school, to, to rise above. You can't be too good to play in a consolation game. No, ma no matter if you're disappointed uh, to be there or not, you have to bring it every time you step on the basketball. It's a privilege to play in this tournament, in this league, in this environment. And, the, and these girls have to take advantage of every opportunity that they have. Laval do a great job of moving the ball around the perimeter there, but Mount Pearl, fantastic defense by the Huskies. Jump ball eventually gets called. Little discussion here about where the possession arrow should be. Fred Wakeham and Randy Ball assigned to this game. A little surprised to see officials of that caliber on this one, Scott. Randy Ball mentioning to me, I asked him how long he's been refing since 1969. Wow. You were only a little kid then, little Steve. Little kid. I was not even conceived in 1969. <laughs> I'm not that old. Come on. I'm always saying I'm fat and I'm old. I guess I'm not really old. Inbounds from Mount Pearl. Here's Mackenzie Courtney. She brings it to the rack. Nice hoop there. And Great drive down the middle. Our scoreboard guy falling a little bit behind the pace here. We've got a 6-4 Laval lead. Good defense there by Mount Pearl's number seven, Hannah McCarthy. Forces the out-of-bounds play. Substitution coming in for Laval now as number 15, Lauren Kelly, checks into the game. And checking out is number 14, Emily O'Keefe. Mount Pearl team playing some pretty good defense here early on. And here's a turnover, and Smith is going to go coast to coast. Catherine Smith in for the layup. Couldn't quite get it to. She was pestered behind, but Smith follows up and gets her own rebound. And the game is knotted up at six. Great second effort there by Catherine. Of course, you'd like to see her make that the first go around, but good composure to finish the playoff. Six minutes left to play in the first quarter. Teams knotted up at six. Laval Cavaliers out of Pacentia in red. Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies in white. Going to be a foul called here. Hannah McCarthy gets shot with the reach in. See a lot of that type of foul, Scott. Again, it comes a defensive technique. I like the enthusiasm 
the the assertiveness, but you have uh, defensively you have to have great technique. No different in shooting. Uh, Hannah would, came across her body uh, in on the defender. She she's better off keeping her right hand up into the passing lane with her thumb down in denial defense. Lauren Kelly puts the points back, and Laval take the lead once again. Ball put under the basket. Nice defense there by the Mount Pearl player from the floor. Lauren Bill getting a hand on that ball. That was pretty tenacious of Lauren to do that. Nice play. I know Lauren is in the mix with the Newfoundland Labrador basketball uh, provincial team program. Part of the developmental group, I, I believe, for under 14, under 13. So, uh, again, another young player. Mount Pearl forced the turnover. Good defense there. Forces up a bad shot. And the Huskies with a chance to come out. Laval looked like they might have been thinking about pressuring there. Then I don't, actually, not quite sure they realized they didn't have the ball. Great screen set there at half by number 23, Chloe, Chloe White. Laval has to do a better job of calling those screens, protecting your teammates. Communication. Bailey Lannon up top to Fudge. Fudge pulls the ball across for Brooklyn McCarthy. McCarthy now out the top of the key. Here's a shot from the foul line into the hands of Lauren Kelly. And Kelly puts some liquid Drano on that one. Great technique great, and, and great Great shot, you catch the ball. If you're open, it's your job to shoot it. Laval being more aggressive on defense right now. Chloe White had given a hard time on that run. Here comes Laval, good drive there by the little point guard. Number six, Mackenzie Courtney. Showed a great first step there, getting around the Laval defender. Couldn't quite get the ball to drop. Nice player, a couple, a couple bright spots here for this Mount Pearl team. And we got the Seagulls invading the Powerplex once again. That is probably the worst ringtone I've ever heard on a phone, a bunch of Seagulls. Who has a bunch of Seagulls on their phone? Unless you're a big fan of a flock of Seagulls or something. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. I, I, I will defend my ringtone. <laughs> It, 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 it uh, soothes me in the morning. All right. Actually, I, I live right by the ocean, and I, I'm not joking. There are times when I hear seagulls and think it's my ringtone. That would have me change my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> Jump ball called. Possession arrow going to go to Mount Pearl. Laval, a little bit of a press here now. Under some pressure, they inbound the ball. Courtney. Fortunate to pick that one up. Here comes Courtney. Courtney drives down the floor for Smith. Smith jump shot. That one doesn't fall. Rebounded by White. Down low. Another jump ball. That must be the fifth or sixth jump ball already, Scott. In this game, we're only in the first quarter. Timeout called. Jump by the... Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies, much to the chagrin of official Fred Wakeham. I would love to have a jump ball count, Steve, because, you know, it, it's great to compliment the players for getting on the floor and diving and, and, and tying up the ball into these jump ball situations. But a lot of times jump balls are, are, are a result of sloppy play. So... It's it's great to watch. It's great to see these players hit the floor, but I would rather see them play with, execute with execute with control, and and not on the floor diving around wildly for loose balls. A little talk about the power plex here. All of a sudden, we were in a we were in a tough spot for the last broadcast. A real tough spot, actually, and a lot of crowd around. But right now that they've gone to the two gymnasium setup rather than four, this is a heck of a facility. This is set up great for basketball right now. Right now, it's it's fantastic, and we're gonna have. I'm sure we're gonna have the bleachers on the end line maybe for tonight, and this gym is gonna be rocking. If you're in town, certainly come down to the Powerplex. Yeah, I'm, what's I, it? Three bucks to get yeah, in. Yeah, best three bucks you'll spend. I mean, great basketball, great to be entertained for that. And you can bring your tablet or web device, and you can have the pleasure of listening to us at the same time, Scott. How oh. does it get? Any better than that. Uh, life is good. Laval puts the ball into the hole. 
Comes up empty though. Mount Pearl make a steal, but Lavelle right away then steal back. Kelly. Another jump ball called there, and there's an example of what you were saying there. Catherine Smith just takes advantage of Kelly, leaving the ball too low. Jump ball, why was it a jump ball? The Laval player picked up her dribble. Need to keep your dribble alive. Get it out to an angle where you can make a pass or make a play. Referee's going to have a discussion with the table. I think the possession arrow might be broken. It's after going back and forth so much so many times here. Steve just had a tweet come in. Luckily, no seagull notification no. for my tweets. Uh, one of uh, one of the local basketball players' parents asking uh, what the results were for this morning's girls' side of the game. I'm going to tweet that out now. You want to remind them about our Twitter? Absolutely. We're live and interactive here on TV1. You can reach out to the Swami, the guru, Scott Noft. will reach out to him at... NLB train and if you want to take a dart at me I'm all ears at Steve Power NL love to hear from you put any shout outs to anybody you'd like on the air and as Scott is doing now tweeting out the scores from the Elite Eight event here anything we can do to help you out and help support and promote local basketball that's what we're all about and all about the community here at Bell TV One foul called going against the Huskies Laval going to go to the line to shoot two. Looks like it's going to be Amber Barron going to step up to the charity stripe for a shot. We see some substitutions coming in for both teams. Catherine Smith checks out for Mount Pearl, and Hannah McCarthy is going to check in. <coughs> Amber Brown, a, a great 10 player with Laval. Real nice set of free throws right there. Drains both of them. Congratulations extended to our color commentary man. Scott, Scott, you're definitely the best color guy in this gym right now. There's no doubt about it, 100%. Appreciate the compliment. I'll take it any way I can get it, Steve. Whoa, and a big foul there on the end. Player goes down, gonna be a shooting situation, a push. And I hear the, someone balled out that was intentional. I tell you what, it looked like it for me, Scott. It looked like a, uh, a, a, da a dangerous play on the basketball. Luckily, the Laval player bounces, bounces up quickly. You have to make a play on the ball when, when you're, when, you know, we saw that in the last game with PWC. Uh, and the mobile team, the mobile team, there's no team in this tournament does a better job of chasing down, going for the blocks. But you have to make a play on the basketball. You can't just have a hand on the hip or, or, or push from behind. Huskies inbound in the offensive zone. There's a shot by Courtney. That one kisses nothing but the glass. Away come Lavelle. Backcourt violation call there as Ember... Barron didn't quite get to the half court. Checking in now for Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies, number 14, Ireland Kenny, makes her first appearance in this game. Ball to be inbounded. By Bill, Jessica Bill. Here's Kenny now, Kenny on the outside. Good pressure defense by the Cavaliers. Kenny finds Bill, that shot bounces wide. Pressure there and referee's arm goes up. Lauren with the shot from the right corner and her sister, by the looks of it, her twin sister Jessica, they are twins, I know that, picking up the rebound on the, on the left side. Double dribble called against Kenny. Ball gets turned over to Laval. A little bit of debris on the floor there from the official. Just picks it up. 14 to six. Laval Cavaliers over to Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies. Nice find in the corner. And that's something you see, the, the better teams in this event, Scott. I see a lot of teams, they penetrate well, they get the open shot, but the better teams knock them down. 
shooting is you know it's it's a it's a huge issue for the sport here in Newfoundland on the national level we are shooting the lowest percentage uh, nationally if not the lowest close to the lowest under under 30 percent provincially and and I would imagine the number the percentage is, is uh, even lower than that in, in the uh, in, in the basketball that we've seen so far certainly from the perimeter Nice inbound play there is Haley Fudge. It's about getting in the gym. Gets in position, sinks that one. Doing the right things and and uh, and getting getting shots up. You can't wait till you're in these moments, these tournaments, and, and hope that the ball is going to start to fall in the basket. That's not how it works. So Kenny checks out of the game now. Checking in for the Huskies is Morgan Courtney. Checks back in. Here's O'Keefe. Out for Fudge. Fudge down for Brooklyn McCarthy. McCarthy in a little trouble. Kicks it out for Lannon. Here's Lannon for Fudge. Fudge finds Brooklyn McCarthy. Play ball is called. Need to get a shot off if you're the Laval Cavaliers. Good defense there by Mount Pearl. There's only four seconds left on the shot clock. Great, so great effort. Needed. Great effort from this Mount Pearl team. Good inbounds play here for Lavelle. Need a quick shot. Be in fear of a shot clock violation. And there comes the shot, and it does catch the rim. Rebound. Going to be a jump ball situation once again. That arrow's going overtime in this one, Scott. As much as we talked about the last game, how quick it was, this one has just been a snail's pace. The number of whistles. Another jump ball, and again. A and another jump ball is called. This is the 2016 Jump Ball Cup. Laval up by 10, 16 to 6, 58 seconds left to go in the first quarter. That's, again, I can't, I can't say it enough. That's something we as a province, we should probably, uh, and I hope that they do, keep track of these jump balls. And, and I don't think we should not call the jump ball, keep calling it, but we, we have to try to reduce the number of jump balls, and it comes from fundamentals and passing, fundamentals and dribbling. Checking into the game now for Laval is number 25. A foul here against Brooklyn McCarthy. Scott will go find out after the quarter who number 25 is. We don't have her listed on our program. We'll find out for you after that. At the free throw line now for <coughs> Four Mount Pearl is number five, Lauren Bill. Bill misses her first attempt. Here comes shot number two. Rattles in and out, but the rebound picked up by the Huskies. They missed the second chance opportunity. And away come the Cavaliers. Pretty, Lannon. pretty good shooting technique. Not bad, but she needs to hold that follow through right until the ball goes in the basket. And tell me, why is that? The ball has left your hand. Why do you stand there with the follow through held down like that? Is that just a, a repetition thing to make sure you have proper form? It's, make it's, sure you got the proper finish on the shot? You know, when you're teaching young players, young kids about following through, uh, it's it's a, the completion, it's the, it's the, it's the, the, it's the, the finishing touch on that shot. And, and you see a lot of kids now watching NBA and you watch a player like Seth Curry who uh, will pull their follow through away. But that's because that player has shot millions yeah. <laughs> of shots. Yeah, I don't uh, think you, anybody's you, going you to be mistaken to, you have to follow Steph through here this weekend. You have to follow through and hold your hand, reach into the basket. Just good shooting mechanics. So the aforementioned Madame X, we'll call her for now, number 25 for Laval, gets on the score sheet with a nice hoop underneath. Mount Pearl in transition. Ball gets turned over just out of the hands of Jessica Bill there. Too bad she made a nice nice play. Look, looking very confident passing the basketball. So after the first quarter, your score, Laval 20, Mount Pearl 6. We'll be back for the call of the second quarter of the 2016 Hall of Fame Cup brought to you by Bella Lyon TV1.
Second quarter about to get underway, and the mystery has indeed been solved, Scott. Number 25 for Laval is Hillary Neville. Ball inbounded by the Huskies to start things off. Hannah McCarthy. Bounce pass inside. That shot misses, but the rebound grabbed by Mount Pearl. One thing the Huskies are pretty good at here. They, they hold the boards pretty well. They seem to get a lot of the loose balls. And we see number four, Michaela Kiley, is going to go to the line to shoot a couple now because of that hard work on the rebounds. It's all there for this team, Steve. They're, they're a young team. They're getting this experience, and they're also a pretty big team. Yeah. Especially if, indeed, they are that young. Kaylee Kiley sinks the second of two free throws. Laval bringing the ball down. Just spoke to a member of the Mount Pearl staff, Scott. One grade 12 player. One grade 12. Most grade nines and some grade 11s, he told me. So I tell you what, you look at it now and yeah, they're taking their lumps. They're, they're getting fed their lunch here this weekend. But if you can stick with it and Great be pass. smart enough and have the mental fortitude to realize that they're going to be okay. Get this, let this thing grow. Put some water on the plant and let it grow. They're going to be okay. Long term, you have to think long term. Take your lumps now. You can either get better mm. or you can be bitter about it. You I recommend the former. You should probably copyright that slogan. That or something. I've, That's pretty good. I've, said, I've said that to many, a, many a, a, an athlete that we have at NLBT especially kids that, that get cut from basketball teams and they come in and talk to us. And, and uh, you know, obviously nobody likes to be cut, uh, but it's a great opportunity to learn and grow. And some of the best basketball players ever, certainly from Newfoundland Labrador, have been cut at some point. You get better or you get bitter. So 20-9 to nine here into the second half. Ball inbounded by... Number 12, Charlotte Griffiths. Good steal there. Chloe White couldn't get a pass. Chloe, she deflects that one in for Courtney. Courtney puts that shot up, can't get it to fall. And I'll give this Mount Pearl team credit. They're battling in this one. They're battling. I think Laval looking a little bit frustrated. Player on the floor, hardly picked her up. Again, you know, you can't be disappointed. Yet you're disappointed that you're here, but you can't play disappointed. You have to put that behind you and go out in this consolation game as if it's your championship game, especially for the athletes that are in grade 12. Mount Pearl with the long bomb off the inbounds, and Catherine Smith pulls that one in for the easy bucket. Very, very physical. I, I'm really surprised at the physical play and how much is going on in there. I can see why there's so many jump balls. They're just all over each other here. Here's a shot from the perimeter by Smith. That one doesn't fall. Rebound picked up by Emily O'Keefe of the Cavaliers. Great job by O'Keefe keeping her dribble. Puts it back for Fudge. Fudge down low for O'Keefe. O'Keefe kicks it back out to Fudge. Fudge under some duress from Catherine Smith. Here's Fudge. Into the key, and we do have a foul on Mount Pearl's Mackenzie Courtney. Haley Fudge going to go to the line to shoot a couple. First one gets the shooter's roll for Fudge, and we see Michaela Vandekamer. Checking into the game now for Laval. Laval putting some offensive pressure here now on the inbounds pass. And you see Mount Pearl right away looking for that long bomb once again. The go-to move off the inbounds for Mount Pearl. Kenzie Courtney looking for Catherine Smith. Smith in the key, managed to get it out for White. White. Moves the ball back for Hannah McCarthy. Back down for White. 
White couldn't quite get that one to fall. Catherine Smith with the follow up back for White and on the third attempt, Mount Pearl get it to drop and Scott, they're owning the boards here. Mount Pearl, I, I, you know, I know they've had some very big losses in the last couple days, but a pretty good little passing team. Like the pass, I, I like that they're going for these long baseball passes. You know, it, it, it lets me know that they're 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 attacking. They're on the attack, and an offensive rebounding. Like to see him put that those balls in the, the first attempt, but a good sign when they're when they're when they're staying with the play and trying to get that second second effort putbacks. Foul called. Going to go against Laval. Substitution now checking into the game for the Cavaliers is Mackenzie Leonard Power. She's going to make her first appearance in this one. And up off the bench for the Huskies. Waiting for her next whistle to come in is going to be Lauren Bill. Good defense there by Emily O'Keefe. Vanderkaven turns it back over though. And checking back in now will be Bill. And Jessica Bill, a double bill, checking in for the Huskies. Good one. Yeah, I said that. I, I did, yeah. Long three-point attempt there by Haley Fudge, and nothing but swoosh on that one. Sweet-looking release there Easy the look, hands of Fudge. Easy look at the basket, and that's what you need to be doing as a player in this tournament. You have got to be knocking down those shots. Another sub coming in for Laval and coming back into the game is Lauren Kelly. And Emily O'Keefe is going to take a break for a minute. Long cross floor pass there, football style. As Michaela Kylie sent that one a little bit too high. Or as Bob Buecher would say, just a bit outside. Timeout called by Laval, 26-13. Bell Alliant is the official broadcaster of this year's Hall of Fame Cup with games presented online at www.bellalliant.ca slash TV1. Bell Alliant, there's more to love with Fiber Up. Mount Pearl bringing the ball up the floor. Here comes Courtney. She brings it to the hoop. Does, can't quite get it to fall though. The and you can hear the coach behind me tell him use the backboard. Make the glass your friend. Pretty important for young basketball players, isn't it, Scott? Basics, basics, basics. And it's all about getting in that gym, putting up the reps before these big tournaments. Mackenzie Leonard Power into the game now outside. Here's Fudge. Fudge, good strong move to the baseline. Vandekaver, she puts it up. Can't get it to fall. Another rebound for Laval. Good job by the Cavaliers here on the inside. Another shot there. Vandekaver can't get that one to fall either. And away come the Huskies. Great box out there by Jessica Bill. And a nice bomb. I, I'm thinking this Mount Pearl team must have a, a touch football team as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're certainly throwing the long bombs and their hands aren't bad at all. Here's Mackenzie Courtney. She turns it over. Away comes Laval and the easy layup put back by Lauren Kelly. Um, a great play, great play. Take advantage. 
Laval looking a little flat-footed, not a lot of energy. Chloe White on the inside. She drops it for two. And Mount Pearl hanging around in this one, Scott. <laughs> Scott, we're going to have a special guest joining you shortly, and I want you to talk to one of the one of the better local coaches around town from what I've seen. Jason Thompson from Waterford Valley High is going to check in with us in a second. And Scott, you can take it away and ask Jason a couple of questions about what he's seen so far at this tournament. Ready? Coach Thompson, welcome to the booth. Thanks tough, for having me. Tough loss against Gonzaga. Ten words or less. What happened? Defense. 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 Turnovers, 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 defense, defense, defense. Well said, well said. Um, Jason, we were talking earlier, uh, myself and Steve, about the number of jump balls it, that we're seeing in this tournament. And I mentioned that, you know, uh, you might think a jump ball is a great play, a great hustle play. As a coach, a lot of these jump balls are coming out of a sloppy play. Do we keep stats on jump balls? Do you keep stats with your team on jump balls? Uh, no, I don't keep stats with my team on jump balls. Uh, the jump balls at this level, as far as I'm concerned, I think that comes down to some direction from the coaches. I know with my group, I don't encourage reaching in because in order to get a jump ball, you got to reach in. And I think if the ref calls that more fouls, which I think is happening, there'll be less jump balls and we'll get better basketball. Going forward in the tournament, Jason, where, where, where does the water for Valley uh, Warriors take it from here? Uh, well, we've got a game coming up next now against Fatima. Uh, we've had two tough, tough losses, one last night and one again today. So we get to play Fatima now in the next game. Hopefully my guys can show, you know, a little bit of heart here now. Fatima's got a good, well-coached team there. You know, small school coming in here competing. Hats off to those guys. But I'm hoping my team can find what we've been missing the last couple of games and have a good game and end the tournament on a strong note. Chase, thanks a lot for dropping by. All the best with the Hall of Fame. And uh, in the 4As, I'm sure we'll see your guys uh, competing for the 4A championships come March. Perfect. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> yeah, why not? Mix it up. Next time we get a guy knows what he's talking about, I think. <laughs> Jason Thompson there from Waterford Valley Warriors. Thanks a lot for stopping by. And Laval got on quite the little run here. They took about an eight point swing. Missed the scoreboard there. Sorry for the fans sorry. watching on uh, Bell. Right now we've got a score of 34-19 for the Cavaliers. Here's a steal here. And Leonard Power gonna take it coast to coast. Takes her time, goes down and puts it up off the glass. Great hustle Portland. back by Lauren Bill. Very impressed with these two Bill sisters. I'm thinking we're going to have to come up with a with a nickname, Steve. Yeah. Here's Haley Fudge on the layup and she's going to put it back. And you can tell now this Laval team just a little bit too talented. A little sharper, a little crisper. And, 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 and quicker to the punch. Has Have that first step advantage over the Mount Pearl team. Well, once again, it's all about experience right now for these young Mount Pearl ladies. I mean, look at these kids in grade nine right now. Fast forward the clock, three years time, three more years of playing at this level. How much better will they be providing mentally? And that's, it's easy to say, you know, something three years time, you're gonna be good, you're gonna be good. But it's tough losing. It's very tough and you don't want to accept learning how to lose. You can get lessons from it, but the, the, the mentally tough athlete can channel that. And I think if these young girls can figure that out, their future's certainly bright for this Mount Pearl Senior High program. I, I agree, Steve. You know, it answers the question, do you, do you love it? Do you, do you love it enough to lose? Watch this hustle there from Catherine Smith, taking away an easy layup from Mackenzie Leonard Power, Catherine Smith, great job on the defensive side of the ball there. Here's Vicki Hurley now. Hurley goes in and she finds herself on the score sheet for the Huskies. Vicki Hurley. Nice play. 
Nice finish at the basket, right through the key. Fast break opportunity for Laval, just gets tipped out of bounds. Here's Lannon on the inbounds. Gets it to the top of the key to Shala Griffiths. Griffiths for Leonard Power. Leonard Power goes down in a heap. And she gets fouled. Foul getting charged to Vicki Hurley. So Hurley getting on the score sheet immediately here. From the good and the bad. This foul and the score. Here's Fudge. Fudge, top of the key, moves it for Lannon. Lannon. Can't find her way through, manages to pick the ball up. Kicks it outside, there's a shot in the outside, goes off the rim. Rebound goes to Laval. And they'll have another opportunity. Kenzie Leonard Power underneath, puts that one up off the glass, doesn't come down. And a big battle ensues on the ground, all hands on deck, and yet another jump ball. Jason made a good point about the jump, jump, jump ball situation. I'm reaching in for 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 the basketball. It's a, it's a tough call for the ref. Uh, you know, you can't blow the whistle every single time and call a foul. Uh, but but maybe maybe uh, the NLBA should look at that a little bit and, and and talk to the officials about deterring such uh, blatant jumping on the basketball, flopping. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Smith going to leave the ball for Jessica Bill to carry up the floor. Jessica down to Lauren. And now Haley Fudge gets the steal. She's going to come away. Good defense there by the Mount Pearl player coming back, Hannah McCarthy. But Fudge, the savvy veteran she is. Drops it for another two. Us using their inside shoulder to ward off the defender and finish with her outside hand. Nice play. Here's Catherine Smith now. Smith in some trouble down in the corner. Lannon knocks it out of her hands, but Mount Pearl will maintain possession of the ball. Some grit here in this Mount Pearl team. Uh, not backing down, taking it to the basket. Here's Smith. Smith gets hacked, going up on that one. Lannon commits the foul, so Catherine Smith gonna go to the line to shoot two. Bell Line TV One is the official broadcaster of this year's Hall of Fame Cup, with games presented online at www.bellaline.ca TV One. Bell Line, there's more to love with Fiber Op. Forty twenty-two. the score here. The dying seconds of this first half, should be said, 22 points, the highest amount of points Mount Pearl's put up yet in the tournament, Scott, and they still got a full half to go. And a little bit of a traveling violation walk there. I've and seen, another one. I've seen ducks cross the street down by Bowling Park not take as many steps as that. <laughs> After the first half, Laval 40, Mount Pearl 22. We'll be back for a call in a second. The 2016 Hall of Fame Cup, Ambella Line, TV One.
Back for the second half. Laval in red, Mount Pearl and white. Mount Pearl going to have the inbounds here to start this second half off. And the Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies going to try to kick their offense into gear. Morgan Courtney down low for her, we'll assume it's her sister, Mackenzie Courtney. Two young ladies do look alike, so we'll go with that for now. Laval's number 25, Hillary Neville, puts the ball to the floor, kicks it out for Fudge. Fudge in deep for Leonard Power. Leonard Power tries to go up with it. Nice ball stuff there by the Mount Pearl defenders. Ball goes out of bounds. Laval still with possession. Brooklyn McCarthy out for Fudge. Fudge to the hoop, puts it up, and the layup is good for Laval. Here's Morgan Courtney now. Courtney picked up the dribble, finds it down low for McKenzie Courtney. McKenzie out top, and that was intercepted there. Going to be still Mount Pearl ball. Good effort there in the interception by Hillary Neville of Laval. Huskies on the inbounds. And Hillary Neville going for another steal there. Almost getting it. Traveling, they're going to be the call there. Little too anxious there by the senior high player, Mackenzie Courtney. Little too anxious again, that, that experience. I don't think we'll see her make that play uh, in the years to come at the uh, Hall of Fame Cup. Absolutely not, and that's one of those learning things for sure. And and you, also, Steve, I, I gotta thank Bell for broadcasting these games, and I hope each coach and player in in the tournament get a copy and and go over, watch your game. That's that's where Newfoundland Labrador basketball we have to take our games to the next level, and the way to do that. One of the ways is to watch yourself play. The tape don't lie. Watch yourself play. Look at the things you do correctly. Look at the things you do incorrectly and make adjustments for your training and get at it over the summer and come next February be a better basketball player. Lannon makes the most of her trip to the line. Drains two free throws. Here's Courtney. Tries to get a return pass, can't quite get there. From the hands of number eight, Mandy McGraw. McGraw goes down to the floor and loses the jump ball possession. Laval comes away with it. Here's Fudge. Fudge down for Leonard Power. Leonard Power into the key for Lannon. Lannon tries to go to the hoop, can't get it up. Nice rebound there by Hannah McCarthy of the Huskies. Here's McCarthy. McCarthy bounce pass, not enough mustard on that one though, and Lannon takes it. Not enough mustard and, and not the correct angle, wants to get that ball over on the wing to make that entry pass. That, however, a great pass. All Swedish, no finish. They're, they need to pick the other Scandinavian country on that play because that was a fantastic play to set it up, but you've got to be able to finish it off. Great play. Fudge for Brooklyn McGraw. Here's McGraw. Outside for Lannon. Lannon drives the hoop and she puts it back for the two pointer. Both teams looking a little fatigued out there. Absolutely. I, th I think a great time for a bench to get off its feet, get some chance going, get some juice flowing on your team. It'll it'll help the players on the floor. Help the commentators, too, who's starting to get a little long in the tooth for us here today, too. Only halfway through our day, though, Scott. Game three, three more left to go. Steve, I, I'm not complaining. I, I, can't th I can't thank Bell enough for asking me to do these games. Uh, it, it is a thrill for me to do, to do these and call these games, and, and I hope we continue to, to promote more high school basketball 
uh, in the future, and and I can only hope that I get asked to to, to commentate more. You'll in the be kept on, big fella. You'll be kept on. Not sure about me, but I'm pretty sure you'll be kept on. We're a package. We Here are. We, go. we are a package. Where you go, I go. There we go. Landon on the rebound. Ball bounces off her foot. Mount Pearl going to have another shot. Keep it alive. Substitution coming into the game as Landon will check out. And Charlotte Griffiths is going to come in for the Huskies. Mount Pearl getting an opportunity to make a sub as well as Jessica Bill comes in and takes her sister Lauren out. Here's Bill down at the baseline. Kicks the ball outside for Hannah McCarthy. McCarthy doing a good job keeping her dribble alive. Well done. Really wants to stay away from that left hand though, Scott. That's something she need to work on. I can see that painfully staying on the right hand a lot of times. Yes. I, again, fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. And, and having the basketball in your hand, Steve, another problem, another challenge that we have with our youth is phones. When I was growing up playing basketball in the 90s, <laughs> Never had a phone. I had a basketball in my hand. So, so these kids now That's that are on point. Th that are on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on their phones, uh, every hour you're on, you have that phone in your hand. Is an hour you don't have a basketball yes. in your hand. And, and I and I well, can for that see matter, that any any sport. I mean anything. It would be baseball, basketball, hockey, uh, any activity whatsoever. Phones and video games. It's certainly more prevalent now. Electronics. Any electronics. Not that we're against phones here at Bell. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Steve, we're kidding, you, folks. We're kidding, obviously. And a big part of what, uh, what we do at NLBT is, you know, we try to engage the kids with social media. We're all over um, Instagram, Next Level Basketball Training. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're, we're getting the kids engaged, trying to use it to our advantage. Van de Kamer had a shot underneath, couldn't quite get it. McCarthy drives down the lane, she gets up and she's gonna go to the charity stripe to shoot a couple, will be Hannah McCarthy. Bella Lines, proud sponsor of the 2016 Hall of Fame Cup, live from the Powerplex in St. John's, Newfoundland, Labrador. Bella Lines, there's more to love with Fiber Op TV. The 17th Hall of Fame Cup, our second anniversary. Steve, I hope you and I have 17 uh, more Hall of Fame Cups together. How about we read off a couple of Hall of Fame uh, members here? Absolutely. Let's hear them. I'm just l scanning the list now. Of course, the... Uh, the some of them here in attendance this weekend. Some of them. Saying. I've seen Billy Brof uh, Bill Brophy here, uh, Peter Abbott. I'm sure uh, we'll probably see Glenn Normore around here. Good strong move to the hoop by Vanderkaven. Can't get it to fall, Vanderkamer that is. Randy Ball, our, our official uh, member of the Hall of Fame. Clarence Sutton, of course. Uh, Andrea Hutchins, you want to talk about a, a, a just an unbelievable athlete to come from this province. Never mind basketball, any sport. Three-time national champion with the Winnipeg uh, basketball program in the in the mid 90s I believe they set a collegiate North American record uh, for 100 plus wins in a row if wow. someone would tweet me on that uh, but I, but I believe I'm correct of course Ted Byrne Donna Brenton Harry Power Glenn Stanford Tony Wakeham the list goes on and on George Power Annette Rossiter Anna McCarthy now going coast to coast for Mount Pearl. Can't quite get it to drop. Rebound. Second shot attempt by Courtney. She can't get it to fall either. And we see Fudge deftly handling that rebound and removing her, her hairband and picking up the dribble and putting her hairband back in all at once. That's talent. Can't You don't read those stats on the score sheet. <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty, I, I sound like I'm tongue in cheek there. I'll tell you what, that was pretty impressive by that young lady then. Ball put into the key. Great play. Nice basket there by Jessica Bill. 
That's the way you do it. Jessica down in the paint, paying the rent, paying the bills. Both her and Lauren, uh, very impressive this afternoon. There it is, Gott Noftel, president of the Bill Fan Club, for the newfound, the dollar bills. Laval, down in the paint, O'Keefe puts it up on the glass, rebound, and she gets it and puts it back as Emily O'Keefe doing her own hard work there by herself. Here's Courtney now. Mackenzie Courtney bringing the ball down the floor. Substitution coming in. Hannah McCarthy going to check out of the game. Great little run there for young Miss McCarthy. A couple of great drives to the basket. And we see checking into the game for Mount Pearl is Michaela Kiley once again. Here's Bill out for Courtney. Courtney into Kylie. Kylie goes down low and we've got a shooting foul and nice ball movement. I don't know if Amber, let me see, Amber Barron, I don't know if she could have done anything better there, Scott. She seems to have her arms straight up. Good, pos good uh, positioning. As a defender, what, what else could you do there? Well, as a defender playing in the low post like that, you don't want to be directly behind the, the, the player that you're guarding. You want to be full front or three quarters. You don't want to get, get caught you. totally behind. First shot misses its mark from Kylie. But as far as the foul goes, maybe uh, Freddie maybe losing, losing, uh, losing the plot a little bit there. Here's O'Keefe. O'Keefe for Laval. Is Fred Wakeham in the Hall of Fame? Freddie Wakeham. He should be. If he's not, he should be. You know, I remember growing up uh, as a young player back in the 90s playing in the men's league and, and uh, playing on the Canada Games team. And when you walk in the gym and you see Freddie Wakeham was ref in the game, you knew, you knew you were in for a good, good game. If he's not in the Hall of Fame, he's certainly in the Hall of Fame hairdos. Gorgeous hair. The Silver Fox. Here's Courtney bringing the ball up the floor for the Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies. Number six, Mackenzie Courtney, down low for Smith. Smith, she misses her shot, and Haley Fudge, and there's just band-aids or tape or something coming off these girls all over the place. We see an alert Mount Pearl bench going out to pick it up. I haven't seen so much debris since my last trip to Robin Hood Bay here. There's a good ball movement there by the Laval team. Dumping it inside. Absolutely. Letting Emily Foley try to bring it up. Foley got fouled on the play, and Foley's going to make a trip to the foul line to shoot a couple. Game going at a snail's pace once again, though, Scott. The second quarter seemed all right. The, this third quarter has been very, very slow. The amount of whistles and fouls and jump balls, et cetera. Uh, and that's that. That's a great point, Steve. It, it takes away from the flow of the basketball game and the excitement of the game. Basketball is, and high school basketball is, when it's played right and when it's played up and down the floor and two teams going at it, it's extremely exciting. Three bucks to get in there to the power oh, plays. Yeah. Well, that game we called earlier between Prince of Wales Collegiate and uh, Mobile. Oh, my goodness. That, that was exciting. exciting. And you don't, folks, anybody, listen, you really don't need to be a fan of basketball because these kids are just good athletes. And you can tell they're having fun, they're enjoying playing. And it's a great atmosphere here at the Powerplex. And the games are going to get better as the day, as the day goes on. Uh, the skill set is going to increase and the stakes are going to increase. Absolutely. Coming up in about three hours' time, we've got semifinal action in both the ladies and the men's or the boys and the girls if you must, sections. Ball gets tipped out of bounds there. It's going to be turned over. Mount Pearl Senior will take possession. 123 left to go here in this third quarter. 50 to 27. Laval on top. Kenzie Courtney down for Smith. 
Smith looks to get it back to Corny. That ball is turned over. Substitutions coming in once again. And Hillary Neville's going to check into the game for Laval. You know, Steve, I would like to see the 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 the, the bench is up a little bit more here. It's it's a, a quiet gym. This game is not out of reach for Mount Pearl. They could they could make Absolutely. it make it make a, a run down uh, down a bunch, but easily doable to get back. But I I gotta comment on on this young Mount Pearl team. Very positive team. I don't see you know for for the for the amount of mistakes and turnovers they're making. I don't see any uh, blaming. I don't see any heads down or or anything like that. Pretty upbeat team and, and they just got their head down going to work. No good point to make, especially tough coming out on the wrong end of some big scores. But they've seemed pretty composed in this one and pretty, pretty certainly putting the effort forward. Absolutely. Nice cut to the basket. Nice play. And rewarded is going to be a three point play possibly for Michaela Kiley. She's going to go to the line to try to convert. So on the girls' side, seems we are doing a girls' game here. It seems like all roads are going to lead to St. Kevin's tangling with Waterford Valley High. St. Kevin's, no, we're going to have the call of their game tonight. I believe St. Kevin's are going to play, is it O'Donnell or, or Mobile? No, it's I've, not Mobile. Uh, O'Donnell. St. Kevin's and O'Donnell That's are That's going to be a big game. It's going to be a great game. Good defense there by the Mount Pearl Huskies. Steve, we saw last year on this very court, two teams with the exact same colors. We saw St. Kevin's play Bishops. St. Kevin's down 22. I'll remember that. Jason Thompson, the coach we interviewed earlier, chewed the team out in the corner down there, if you can remember. Yes, sir. And they came back from down 22 uh, with, with, a, with just a, an electric finish at the end. I think we got an intentional foul called here. Or no, the half is over. Sorry, the half is over. Quarter is over. I was wondering why everybody was going to the bench. And Amber Brown. Uh, and she sinks both. So after three, Laval, 54, Mount Pearl Senior High, 31. You're watching coverage of the 2016 Hall of Fame Cup on Bella Line TV1. Fourth quarter underway, Catherine Smith out for Mackenzie Kenny. Kenny inside, that one rattles off the rim. And rebound grabbed by Hillary Neville. Ball put down the floor, Brooklyn McCarthy puts it up. Can't get that shot to go. Ball's turned over and Mount Pearl Senior High will come back. Mount Pearl in the key, that one's turned over. Here's Lannon now. Lannon on a counter attack. Ball gets deflected. Up top gonna have a foul call and Lannon will go to the line to shoot two.
Nice job boxing out by Vicki Hurley, number 10 on Mount Pearl Senior High. Ball goes out of bounds. Huskies with the possession. Aaron shot there by Kenny. Picked up by Michaela Kiley. Kiley can't quite hold on to that one. Ball gets turned over and it's going to go to the Cavaliers. Not bad on the play-by-play -play call there, big fella. Pretty good master jack of all trades. And master of all of them as well. You know, Steve, part of the reason why I, I, I love doing this and, and, and you know, you got to get out of your comfort zone. And, and I'm trying to set an example for, you know, the kids that we have at NLBT. Get out of your comfort zones. Don't be afraid to, to look foolish sometimes. Uh, I got do, that do, down pat. <laughs> I've noticed. Uh, you know, get out of your comfort zones. And that's what you have to do as an athlete. Absolutely. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to challenge yourself. This is very challenging for me, but I absolutely love it. Again, I appreciate it, Bell. Anytime. Bailey Lannon kicks the ball out. Here's Brooklyn McCarthy now. McCarthy finding Leonard Power, but she was a little too anxious there and took a couple of steps before getting on. These Laval girls are just having some fun out there now, Scott. You can see the smiles on their face, whether they turn it over or not. You know something? You're in a ball game like this with eight minutes left. That's the way it should be. Absolutely. You don't need to put the foot on the gas nope. here and put it down. Just go out and play your game and once it grab your two points, as they say, and go home. There's a long shot of tench there by Vicki Hurley. That one rattles the back of the glass and bounces out of play. Steve, I'll, I'll give a shameless plug. Uh, anyone interested in basketball out there and, and podcasts, uh, I've been hosting a, a basketball podcast. I call it the Pine Podcast. I'm looking at this Hall of Fame uh, list that we have on the program, and I see Ted Byrne. I was lucky enough to have Ted Byrne on the program uh, you can you can visit nlbt.ca and you'll see the see the uh, the link there for the podcast. Or you go on to iTunes and just search basketball training and you'll see our logo. Uh, what a thrill for me to have a Hall of Fame. It was it was during the weekend that he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, and to have to have a player like Ted Burns sit down and and give you know uh, an hour of his time and the the. The, the experiences that he's had and the, the wisdom that he's had played with the Canadian national team, played in the NBA developmental league for a summer in, in Los Angeles, played in North Carolina against the Tar Heels with Team Canada. That's pedigree. Uh, uh, you know, a, a kid just like these kids playing in the same tournaments, uh, played at Brother Rice. Uh, I recommend anyone check it out. We also had another uh, Team Canada member, Hannah Jardine, was on it. Uh, we've had Billy Murphy, the executive director of Newfoundland Labrador Basketball. Adam Wedlake, the direct, director of Manitoba Basketball, was on it. Steve, I even had a celebrity like yourself, Greg Malone from Codco, oh, wow. was on the program. And uh, we're going to be starting the second season next month, uh, and I hope everyone checks it out. It's, it's, a, it's a ton of fun. We have, it's totally free. We have 14 hours of, of program. Had Erica Coltis on it. Uh, any, any females out there, we need more females uh, involved in coaching. Take a listen and check it out, please. Nothing wrong with that plug at all. I have, did, I have listened to your podcast, actually. I've gone on, and I tell you what. Which, which episode? I listened to the one last year with Bill, uh, the guy at the NLB. Bill, a Bill Murphy. Billy Murphy. I am actually, I, I think you do a great job at it. It is entertaining. It's informative for the basketball community. I think I'll go on to hear the Greg Malone one. That ought to have been a hoot. A real thrill for me, you know. When when I was doing the podcast and coming up with lists of people to uh, to invite on the show, I, I thought, why not? I'll, I'll ask uh, Greg Absolutely. Malone. Because Greg Malone, I had read uh, his book, and he mentioned that his dad had coached basketball at St. Bonds. So that was my uh, in. I sent him a message. Sure, Scott, wh when and where. There you go. Next thing I know, Greg Malone is walking into my house. And you know something, there's not enough of that out there. Greg Malone, a big name in the arts community, but you can cross-reference arts with sport. You can cross-reference 
you can put, get a good mix of a, a hockey guy with a basketball guy. You don't know where it's going to go. Absolutely. Sports is sports. Experience is experience. Experience I mean. is experience. And, you know, Greg talked about putting off a play or, 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 or getting a movie off the ground. It, it's no different than starting a basketball program. Uh, you know, it takes an incredible amount of work, incredible amount of dedication, and you have to have the passion to do it and put the work in. And, and you know, Greg's a, a star. Absolutely. Putting the work in just in was Jessica Bill. She grabs a rebound and puts up a third attempt for the Mount Pearl Huskies, and it finally does drop for them. Brooklyn McCarthy on the outside. McCarthy with the long two-point shot, and she sinks that for the Cavaliers. Cavs having fun down there. You can hear the bench cheering for some of these players coming off the bench, scoring baskets. At one point, Scott, were Laval ever called the Titans? I know Cornerbrook are Titans. I know that, but at, at some point a while ago, it's, can you remember I, that? I for some reason, it's in my mind. I don't know why. I don't think so. Always been the Cavaliers. I believe so, yes. I seem to remember them in orange. Anyone wants brother, to? Uh, brother Martin Cole coaching the the juggernaut of female team that Judy Byrne played on. Anyone wants to tweet us? We, we'd love to have the answers to some of these questions. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. <laughs> not at all. But if I happen to be right, I tell you what, folks, we'll hear about a lot today. <laughs> If I can get something right that the Swami, Scott Noftel doesn't. 57-37, 503 left to go in this one. Mount Pearl still putting in the game effort here. 37 points on the clock for the for the uh, Huskies, more than both their games combined. Still working hard. Here's McCarthy. McCarthy picks up a good screen there from Courtney. McCarthy outside shot. Good position there on the rebound from Mount Pearl. Just can't get it to fall. And Ireland Kenny doing a great job down there. Just can't get their second shot to go. Substitutions back in the game now for Laval. Great to see all these players shoot the basketball too, Steve. Uh, it seems like everyone has, has the green light to shoot. If you're open, take a shot. And that's the way it should be, especially in a game like this for sure. Here's McCarthy from the outside, and she's heating up out there. That's the second one in a row from the same area. That's about the top of the key. Another step back, and it's a three. Big smile on her face after that shot. Good nice defense defensive here. play. Great defense. Courtney outside for McCarthy. McCarthy finds Bill. Bill. Down low for Courtney. Nice there's, play there by Mount Pearl. There's the just, passing from the from the from the Dollar Bill sisters. It's too bad they can't get that to drop because that's great execution. That's really really good ball movement. You almost want them to be rewarded for such smart play. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, Steve. You have to put the work in the gym before you get here to make those little bunnies. Make those little bunnies. There you go. Here's Courtney. Morgan Courtney, ball rolls off her hands, out of bounds, but still going to be white ball. It was deflected from senior high. Hannah McCarthy going to check out now for Mount Pearl. Checking back into the game is Lauren Bill. Red some coming in, and Mackenzie Leonard Power checks in, and Hillary Neville is going to check out for the Cavaliers. Here's Courtney. Courtney just about to pick up her dribble. Just stays at the top of the key. Lots of movement down low. Errant bounced though off Courtney's foot. Ball goes out of bounds, and Laval will take over. Fudge. Down the floor, Haley Fudge. Pass misses on the inside. That ball will be turned over. And Mount Pearl will come back.
Here's Bill. Bill looks for Morgan Courtney in the key outside for McCarthy. Hannah McCarthy. Actually, I just noticed on her sheet, we've got Hannah McCarthy listed as number seven and Hannah McCarthy listed as number 21. So Hannah's a really the, good player. The, the conspiracy theorists yeah. out there. Subbing in now. Not Hammond McCarthy, but it's going to be Chloe White. You can you can see this this Mount Pearl senior high team heavily favoring the right hand side of the basketball oh, court. I uh, would say. Need to work on that balanced uh, fundamental skill set in your ball handling to be able to take the ball confidently over on the left hand side of the court. Substitutions in for Laval, Haley Fudge out, and number 14, Emily O'Keefe, checks into the ball game. Young lady Haley Fudge, Scott, do you know if she's a third year? She's a grade 12 student. This will be her last, uh, her last Hall of Fame Cup. A nice player, nice player for Laval for sure. 226 left to go, 59-37 for the Cavaliers. O'Keefe, ball up the floor, down low for Leonard Power. Hannah McCarthy keeps the ball alive down low, stolen though by Leonard Power. Might have a traveling violation, I believe, maybe. Substitutions coming in once again for Laval. Amber Brown into the game. For the Laval Cavaliers, were they called the Titans? Yeah. We're not sure. Controversy abounds. Please we'll let us know on we'll Twitter. We'll stick with Cavaliers for now. I'm sure. I'm sure that's all it was. If that's what you think, you're right. Uh, you you are correct about the the bright orange jerseys. So I wasn't totally out the to lunch of my teenage years. No, and uh, I can remember in 1991 the Laval Cavaliers beating us. The O'Donnell High Patriots in the championship of the 3A finals at our school. We beat them the night before, and they beat us when it counted. Peter Benoit, Sonny Ennis, Martin Call, you mentioned, was the head coach. Great, great program. Good drive to the basket there. Fantastic drive. By Mackenzie Courtney. She went through her a purpose then. I also remember playing a game against Laval. And the game was canceled. It was at Ron Colley because the, the, the ceiling was leaking. It was a lot of rain. And it was a championship game, and they called it off. And I'm going to throw it out there to the Laval alumni. We will play that game <laughs> any day. <laughs> Steve, you saw me shoot earlier. I'm ready. Oh, you can, you can drain it. I had to empty my wallet in the friendly bed already. <laughs> Fortunately for me, my wallet was, as it normally is, empty. Although I did see Peter Benoit, head coach of the Memorial men's basketball team. He is looking fit as always. Sonny Ennis, I'm, I'm not too sure. I know he works radio in Gander. So we're into the last minute of this one. Laval gonna take away the win here in the consolation game with this 2016 Hall of Fame Cup. But a good effort from the Mount Pearl Senior Huskies and once again talk about the experience and what they've got from this tournament. Steve, you know, the, a consolation game like this, was it the most exciting basketball game we're going to see all weekend? Absolutely not. But it's exciting to watch these young teams uh, play in the 17th. I can't wait till the 18th and 19th to see this Mount Pearl uh, Senior High Huskies team. Again, they have youth. They have size, and now experience, and they need to get in the gym and really work on that skills, the fundamental skills you've got to get in, work on your ball handling, work on your shooting technique, work on your fitness. Then, who, who knows, they could, they could uh, uh, come, rise from the eighth position and uh, sky's the limit for them. So there you go, sound advice from the Swami, Scott Noftel. Final seconds going to tick down in this one. Laval going to pick up their first win of this 2016 Hall of Fame Cup. 
And up next for us will be a consolation game in the boys' division. I believe we've got the mobile team playing O'Donnell, I believe, is our game here, Scott, in the consolation game. And that'll do it. Final score, Laval 59, Mount Pearl 39 for Scott Noftel. I'm Steve Power signing out from the 2016 Hall of Fame Cup on Bella Line TV1. Thanks for watching. We'll be back for the next Consolation Boys game.